Good afternoon, everyone. Let's begin, pray the angels and followed by mass. In the name of the Father, under the Son, under the Holy Spirit. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mary, Mother of God. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, be your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of Christ, his Son, by the message of an angel, so by his passion and cross, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, O Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let's now begin this Holy Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, today in the liturgy of the Word, especially in the Gospel, Jesus makes a very simple, clear, and profound statement to all of us, do not judge others. But going through human experiences, we, and we know how often we have judged others and how often we have been judged as well. So today as we come to celebrate this Eucharist, let's sincerely acknowledge um, for the time that we badly judged others and ask God for his forgiveness and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. I offer this Mass for Pasquale di Gennaro, who is deceased. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoptions, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not boast of preaching the gospel, since it is a duty which has been laid on me. I should be punished if I did not preach it. If I had chosen this work myself, I might have been paid for it. But as I have not, it is a responsibility which has been put into my hands. Do you know what my reward is? It is this, in my preaching, to be able to offer the good news free and not insist on the rights which the gospel gives me. So, though I am not a slave of any man, I have made myself the slave of everyone, so as to win as many as I could. I made myself all things to all men in order to save some at any cost. And I still do this for the sake of the gospel to have a share in its blessing. All the runners at the stadium are trying to win. 
but only one of them gets the prize. You must run in the same way, meaning to win. All the fighters at the games go into strict training. They do this just to win a wreath that will wither away. But we do it for a wreath that will never wither. That is how I run. Intent on winning, that is how I fight, not beating the air. I treat my body hard and make it obey me. For having been an announcer myself, I should not want to be disqualified. The word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. My soul is longing and yearning, is yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my soul ring out their joy to God, the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. The sparrow herself finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her brood. She lays her young by her altars, Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. They are happy who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. They are happy whose strength is in you, in whose hearts are the roads to Zion. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. For the Lord God is a rampart, a shield. He will give us his favor and glory. The Lord will not refuse any good to those who walk without blame. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Make us holy in the truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told a parable to the disciples. Can one blind man guide another? Surely both will fall into a pit. The disciple is not superior to his teacher. The fully trained disciple will always be like his teacher. Why do you observe the splinter in your brother's eye and never notice the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the splinter that is in your eye when you cannot see the plank in your own? Hypocrite, take the plank out of your own eye first then you will see clearly enough to take out the splinter that is in your brother's eye. Dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we continue our reflection from the Gospel of Luke, where these days we are meditating on Jesus' Sermon on the Plain, whereas Matthew we call his Sermon on the Mount, this one Luke's is Sermon on the Plain. And Jesus makes in the Gospel today a very simple, clear, and profound statement to all his disciples, do not judge others. I have four reasons why we should not judge others. No one except God is good enough to judge others because God only sees the whole truth and he only, he only knows the human heart, you know, what, you know, so he has the ability and he's the right person and he has the authority to judge others. Secondly speaking, we do not see all the facts or circumstances or the positions or the temptations that person had when he or she did a particular mistake. So I do not have a fuller knowledge and I do not know the circumstances, so I don't have the right to judge others. Thirdly, we are often prejudiced, you know, in our own judgments of others and total fairness cannot be, and this, the total fairness cannot be expected from me. 
Unfortunately speaking, we have no right to judge because we have the same faults as the other one, and we are judging often. And quite often, when you look at ourselves, we also do the same mistake. So as for me, these are the four reasons why I do not have the moral authority to judge others except God, because he knows the person, and he knows the circumstances, and he has the full knowledge of the personality, and, the, and uh, you know, that's the reason I have no right, but God alone can do the judging. But going through human understandings, you know, very often we, we judge others. But when someone pointed to us, you know, you, when I know that I am judged by others, we always give lots of reasons, you know. We always give reasons why I behave like that, why I did like that. But at the same time, when the other person gives a reason, we don't really take notice of that. But when it comes to me, when it hurts me, I really jump in and say, oh, these are the reasons I did like this and like that. So, you know, every day, you know, as we get up from the bed, from the time we get up and go to bed, you know, we can see how many times we have judged others and how many times we have been judged by others. So all what Jesus says is just, you know, look at yourself. You know, we are all create, you're all created in, the, in my own image and likeness. So look at, you know, look at the wonderful way I have created you. How best you can come closer to me. How best you can put my teachings into practice. And that's how I become a person who, is, who comes closer to God and who is liked by God. You know, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, you know, she says, the moment you judge this, you stop loving the person. The moment you judge others, you stop loving the person. For example, I have a friend of mine who is very close to me. Even though he tends to do some mistakes, I always have a reason to say, and I will not judge him. Because what, what is predominant in me at the moment is love. It's love. When, when there is love, you know, I don't see any negative of the thing. So that's what beautifully she says, when I judge others, I stop loving them. So if I love someone, I won't judge. Abraham Lincoln says another thing, you know, beautifully. Only he, only he has the right to criticize who has the heart to help. Only he has the right to criticize who has the heart to help. So, you know, it, it's, it comes out beautifully, you know, what Jesus talks to his, uh, you know, his disciples. So do not judge. Do not judge others. So, dear friends, ask God for, for his guidance because with the help of God, we will be able to understand, we will be able to understand the others. And when I understand others, I don't judge. Rather, I love them, I help them, I try to be a good brother or sister to them. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. You, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the chorus of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, Don, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Pasquale, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Pasquale, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, St. Eugene de Massenet, St. Patrick, St. Mary of the Cross, Macula, and all the others who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Let's now offer each other God's peace. Peace to you all. And so we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Dear friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful will, Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the fruit of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, go forth. The Mass is ended. Thank you and wish you all a good afternoon.